Welcome back financial forecasters. Today I'm talking about one of the most exciting but boring things you can have in your portfolio. And my dividend earners out there, they know the favorite stock that people have in their portfolios when it comes to passive income are REITs. REITs, real estate investment trusts, owning percentages of a landlord for big multinational corporations that pay you that passive income, that five, six percent, these massive companies and you're just pulling in people's rent and you're getting paid out by holding it. Now, I love these stocks. I'm going to tell you about some of the ones I own and just like the bullish sentiment I have towards this sector going forward. A lot of people are over it. A lot of people are still going into tech, crypto, but man, at the core of me, I still see the greatest capital appreciation and passive income coming in the next couple of years from REITs. So if you want to know why, stick with it. You, if you're especially if you're looking for that juicy dividend and like I want to know your REIT pick. So if you love REITs as much as I do, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe because you know I have a massive portion of my portfolio into REITs and come along with the financial forecaster. Great way to get rich together. So let's go guys. Financial forecaster, let's get into it. All right, so it is so hot outside. The humidity is killing it today. People are out and about. They're on patios. They're out shopping. And this could not make me more happy about REITs. That's the whole reason I'm making this video today is because I see people becoming normal again, for lack of a better word, for socializing again, starting to become the human creatures that we are all along and going out and just trying to just go back to normal. And I cannot tell you how excited I am about REITs and specifics because of this. So you got all your tech plays that jumped on the pandemic and changed in this online e-commerce binge. And that was fantastic when people were stuck in their homes and all this stuff. But guys, it's slowing down. We're the vaccination level is up. Cases are down. We're starting to see a return to normalcy. And when I'm telling you that, you want to be paying attention to REITs. Now, I'm telling you this specifically, a lot of people go out, go buy a house, right? You, you don't go buy a house. It'll gain you money throughout the years. You, you go out, you buy a $400,000 house, $500,000 house. You're hoping for four to 5% capital appreciation every year. And now that sounds great. As a dividend investor, you guys, you know, four to 5% is like the sweet spot. But I hate to break this to all you guys, your, all you homeowners. The first five years of owning a house, you're going to break even. You usually don't make money or profit. Like this market's been crazy, but the, the rule of thumb, the rule of thumb is you buy a house, you, you'll break even five years for the, the taxes and the fees associating with buying a house and everything to do with that. You're gonna break your, it's, it costs a lot of money. Then you got repairs besides the point. So home ownership is not the only way to get money from rental income. Okay, so you own, you want to buy these massive national corporations like Rio Can and Summit and H&R and O and Stag and all of these different REITs are great ways because these people that are paying rent for these spaces, these companies are paying you out in dividends that are usually much more competitively priced than your best utilities or like tech stocks are paying you nothing dividend, great capital growth. Then you have utilities, which are slow capital growth and, but a pretty healthy dividend at around three to 4%. But then you have your REITs and you have these companies that are set to rebound because they got hit hard. A lot of them cut their dividend for the first time ever, but we can all understand that at this point. Like I'm a massive Rio Can shareholder and I understand why they, they cut their dividend. 33% I believe it was. That's okay. I bought more. And you know why I bought more? Because they took that money they saved and they reinvested it. And if we're re returning back to normalcy and people are chomping at the bit to go out again, this is a, a, a time to have a, a very stable asset with very little downside. Now, like they crashed. A lot of these REITs aren't even back up to their 52 week highs. The banks are back out there. The tech stocks have trounced them. Utilities are at their 52 week highs. You can still find a ton of REITs that are under their 52 week highs with great dividends that are just ready to just start being a powerhouse, slow capital growth, but paying you out monthly dividends. You're getting people's rent paid to you. In my opinion, in a lot of people's portfolios, that is a great way to allocate 
10 to 20% of your portfolio to get that passive income that you can reinvest. Now, why am I so bullish? Like, okay, I got RioCam, I have Granite, and I have CT REIT. And then I hold VRE, which is my ETF that has a basket of Canadian REITs. Okay, the one, everyone knows RioCam. You got their shopping malls and you got your mixed condos. You got, they're doing fantastic. You know they cut their dividend. They've already, they're already investing in all of these companies. Sorry, all of these buildings that are going to be great for further capital growth down the years. So Rio can, fantastic. Healthy 5% dividend, uh, maybe a little bit below. Still $7 under their 52 week high, which is like 20, 25% of it. So great. Great room for growth, great room for a dividend increase down the road. We've got Granite, and I've covered Granite on the channel before. An industrial REIT, they, they're raising money, they're buying more, they have almost all of their leasable space out, and it's just a powerhouse. Not as big as Rio can, but it's something in the industrial space in Canada that's growing with great management. Now, the one that I think sneaks under a lot of people's radar is CT REIT. I believe it's CRT. UN on the, the Canadian Stock Exchange. Guys, Canadian Tire, Sport Check, Mark's Work Warehouse, a bunch of these companies that are really going to benefit from reopening. Now that it, with a re, like if you were in Canadian Tire stock, fantastic. That's gonna show the share price. And you know what, as the earnings get better and better for that company, they get better and better for that share price. When you're buying a REIT though, you're looking for a slow and stable capital growth. You're looking at two, three, four percent a year maybe in capital growth, but it's that dividend. They keep uh, close to 100% of their leasable space rented, long-term contracts, then you're just going to get being paid. Don't keep your money in a savings account. Good God, it's just going to rot in there. Uh, people are like, oh, I got my money in my savings. It's my don't touch money. I'm never going to touch it. And they just leave it in there and it loses value. And it drives the financial forecaster absolutely up the wall. And I can be a little biased this way because anybody with a brain on their heads or like a couple million dollars in their pocket, they know that cash is trash sometimes, especially if you're holding it in a savings account and it's doing nothing but depreciating. You want to take that money, say you have a savings account, put it in a REIT. Put it in a basket of REITs. Now, Canadian Tire, specifically the CT REIT, they, Canadian Tire owns all these buildings, guys. They're all leased for 10, 15 years down the road. And they just buy a little more here, buy a little more there. It's one of the most stable, well-paying REITs in Canada. Bar none. I will, I will, I won't fight someone. I'm kind of a, you know, lover, not a fighter. But like, CT REIT. Look into it. They own all of these powerhouse staple companies. They have been going on e-commerce. There's a lot of storage space in these. They're all for their retail opening up for the pandemic. It's not that they have tremendous upside. It's that they have minimal downside and you can start stacking this passive income. REITs are just about having that passive income and they always have a portion of your portfolio that it will perform in bad times, perform in good times, something stable and just a great thing for a portfolio of any size. Please look into REITs. Guys, I have real can, retails, residential, mixed, pushing into residential. I've got granite, which is just pure industrial play. And I have CT REIT, which is just a retail play, but just a safe run of the mill, greatly leased subsidiary of Canadian Tire. I can't, like during this market, we're all crazy, everything's overvalued. CT REIT, I can tell you, the worst that could happen in a crash is it's gonna go down a dollar, maybe a dollar and a half. And if it went down a dollar and a half, the yield spikes, I would still say buy it. There's, there's a very, there's such a small, I couldn't even imagine what could happen to make this company insolvent not to pay its dividend. It even raises dividends once a year consistently. Great company, great manage, CT REIT. Guys, financial forecaster, I just want to tell you, please look at REITs in your portfolio because we're getting rich together. That passive income is important. Hit a like if you own a REIT in the portfolio, guys. That's simple. That's it. Have a great day. Financial forecaster out.